So in this lesson, we're talking about log file auditing. Log files are generally stored on a web server and, you know, simply speaking, contain a history of each and every access by a person or a crawler to your website. They can give you some idea of, you know, how search engine crawlers are handling your website. So why should you care, really? You know, first and foremost, they can help you to understand crawl priorities. You can see which pages are prioritized by search engines and should therefore be considered the most important. Secondly, they can help to prevent reduced crawling. You know, Google may reduce its crawling behavior or the frequency and eventually rank you lower if you constantly serve you know, huge amounts of errors. You also want to understand global issues. You want to identify any kind of crawl shortcomings, you know, such as in the hierarchy or you know, internal linking and structure, you know, with potential even site-wide implications. You also want to ensure proper crawling, really. You want to make sure you know, Google's crawling everything that's important, you know, primarily, obviously, ranking relevant contents, but also older and or you know, fresh items. And you know, the last goal could be to ensure proper linking. You want to make sure that you know, any gained link equity will be always passed along using proper links and or redirects. And only access log files can show you how a search engine's crawler is actually behaving on your site. You know, all the crawling tools are simply trying you know, to simulate their behavior, but it's not what's happening in the real world. So the characteristics of a log file are relatively simple. It's essentially just a text file. The content and structure in log files can vary, and they depend on you know, your web server mostly. So you know, depending on if it's an Apache, Nginx, IIS, or a caching in its configuration. Make sure to identify you know, which setup you're running on and how things look from an infrastructure perspective as well. Usually a log file contains some of the following items. The server IP and or the host name, the timestamp of the request, the method of the request, so that's usually something like get or post, then of course the request URL itself, the HTTP status code, you know, everything is fine for the 200 or you know, 300 indicating redirects, etc. The size and bytes for the response, of course, always depending on you know, if, you have, if your server has been set up to store that kind of information or not. And then also log files store the user agent. So the user agents help you to understand if the request actually came you know, from a crawler or not. And when you work with log file data, you need to ask the right questions. So you know, log file data can really be quite overwhelming because you can do so many different things with it. You know, make sure you've got your questions prepared beforehand. So log file data can be very, very different to, for example, something like Google Analytics. You know, while log files are direct, those kind of server-side pieces of information, Google Analytics uses the client-side code. As the data sets are coming from two different sources, they can be obviously very, very different from one and each other. So when requesting access to log files, keep in mind that you do not need any personal information, really. So when you talk to your IT guys you know, or to a client, you do not really need to worry. It's essentially only about the crawler requests you know, from Google or from Bing. No need for any user data. You, know, you don't need operating system. You don't need a phone number or you know, usernames even. It's just not relevant for what we are planning to do. Also, you need to be aware of how the server infrastructure is actually set up. So if you're running a cache server or you know, even a proxy or a CDN which creates log files elsewhere, you will just need those log files as well to really make sure that you get the full picture.